Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this session is actually a session, uh, a topic from neuroanatomy. Uh, many of you have uh, asked me uh, to do a session on this. So this is part one of basal ganglia. So basal ganglia is actually replaced by the term basal nuclei, the gray matter which is seen in the brain. So why is it called basal? Because uh, you have the two cerebral hemispheres, right? So, in the white matter of the cerebral hemisphere, at the basal region, you get some clusters of neurons. Okay, that is what you call as basal nuclei. Previously, it was called as basal ganglia. So, what is it? You have the cerebrum, the two cerebral hemispheres. So, in the white matter, just at the base of these hemispheres, you have some clusters of nuclei. They are known as the base. Since it is, they are seated at the base of these cerebral hemispheres, you call it as basal. And since they are the neurons, you call it as nuclei. Previously, it was known as basal ganglia. So, in this session, uh, what I am planning to say is, I am just mentioning about the important components of the basal ganglia or basal nuclei as we call now. Then, uh, what are the main functions and what are the uh, main uh, symptoms when you get a lesion? And I am not going into the detailed clinical aspect that we will be seeing it in the coming sessions. And something about the neuronal circuitry of the basal ganglia or the basal nuclei. So, um, when you think about the basal nuclei, I, I would like you all to remember the code ACC. Okay, ACC. So, with the help of ACC, you can explain the anatomical components as well as the function or the role of the basal ganglia or the basal nuclei. So, let's see first. So, anatomically speaking, which are the main parts contributing uh, to the basal nuclei, the basal set of nuclei, which are the parts mainly contributing uh, anatomically. So, A stands for amygdala, C stands for corpus striatum and C stands for clostrum. So, A, C, C, amygdala, corpus striatum and clostrum. But, when you think about the functions of the basal nuclei, Apart from these three, you can also add the substantia nigra, red nucleus, you know these are seen in the midbrain. Then you have the subthalamus or otherwise known as body of lice and then you have the zona inserta between the thalamus and subthalamus. So these are the, nu uh, the nuclear group which you will get in addition to the anatomical structures from the functional perspective. Now coming to the role or the function of the basal nuclei. Uh, suppose uh, when you walk, actually you automatically swing your hands, isn't it? So is it, uh, you are actually, okay, I am stepping uh, my first step, so I, my, I must swing my right hand. Are you aware of all these things? No, of course not. So that is actually uh, automatic reflex motor activity. Uh, so just, just like swinging of your hand, you can just uh, imagine that. So that is actually made possible with the help of basal nuclei. Then uh, the next thing is coordinating willed movements. So coordinating willed movements means um, suppose if you are writing, you have to keep your hand like this and you have to write because it is a coordinated willed movement which you have to perform. So, so you need not think about okay, I have to flex my hand, I have to write like this, write like this. It, it goes just uh, according to your will, isn't it? So that is actually coordination of the willed movement. But the motor activity is done by the cerebral cortex. but coordination it is actually done by the basal nuclei now the third c so again uh, this is uh, the code is the same acc then the third c is control control of which all things the first one the control of the reflexes the second one is control of the group movements which are responsible for the emotional expression so uh, when you just think about the parkinson parkinsonian uh, disorder you can easily uh, correlate the functions. So in case of Parkinsonism, we know that they won't be swinging the hand, so A will be lost. Then the C, the coordination of the willed movements, again it will be lost. They won't be able to start the uh, walking procedure, etc, etc. 
then the group movements of emotional expression because they will be having a masked facies that also will be gone so in order to remember the functions of the basal nuclei uh, you can just think about the parkinsonism uh, disorder because uh, we are all aware about uh, the different symptoms of the parkinsonism so thinking about that you can easily explain the different functions of the basal nuclei so what are the uh, what are the impressions or what are the symptoms which you get if there are lesions in any of these basal nuclear components the first one is there will be increased muscle tone the, the tone will be very much increased that is known as hypertonic so if the tone is very much increased then what will happen the movements will be restricted that is why it is called hypokinetic so increased tone hypertonic along with decreased movements hypokinetic that is the reason uh, for rigidity and tremor in case of again parkinsonism the next thing is involuntary movements because there won't be any coordination of the movements so there will be involuntary movements so involuntary movements means hyperkinetic the movements if increased you call it as hyperkinetic so when will you get hyperkinetic movements if there is no tone if there is no tone for these muscle what will happen it will just flay it like this isn't it but if there is a tone for the muscle it will just get stuck isn't it so if it is there is increased tone it will be rigidity if there is no tone it will be hyperkinetic so the in, if, if uh, there is a lesion in the basal nuclei the second component which you can look for is involuntary movements that is hyperkinetic movements and there won't be any tone there will be loss of tone that is hypotonia so uh, these type of movements are known as dyskinesia which you will uh, usually get in case of chorea athetosis balismus etc now uh, the recent studies uh, this uh, this is somewhat um, interesting that's the reason why i added this point have you ever thought why you get addiction if you use cocaine heroin alcohol uh, something like that so what is the reason for the addiction when you use all these drugs or um, uh, narcotics or alcohol so what is the reason behind or what is the chemical process behind all these are actually increasing the dopamine levels in the body and what will happen if there is increased dopamine they will be stimulating the dopaminergic system of the substantia nigra and as when the substantia nigra the dopaminergic system is activated that will result in rewarding effects and ultimately addiction so they will actually make the body uh, feel for these rewarding effects and that is the reason why you go again and again and procure cocaine heroin etc so that you will get the rewarding effect so that is again uh, a feature it is not actually a lesion this is actually a feature of uh, basal nuclei especially the substantia nigra now we will just have a look at the neurosecutory we know that uh, the basal nuclei is considered under the extra pyramidal system extra pyramidal system means any tract in the brain stem which are not included in the pyramidal tract they are the extra pyramidal tract or extra pyramidal pathway you know the uh, pyramidal tract are the tract of fibers which are passing through the pyramid of the medulla isn't it you have the cortico spinal cortico nuclear cortico pondine fibers all these are mainly considered as the pyramidal tract fibers so all and the rest of the fibers or the connections which you get in the brain stem you call it as uh, which are controlling the spinal cord for the smooth movement or smooth functioning of the motor system that they are the extra pyramidal and most of these will be having its connection starting from the brain stem and then thereby controlling the spinal cord so uh, the basal nuclei they are also considered as a cyst, uh, under the extra pyramidal system but when you look at the neurocircuitry let's see the neurocircuitry uh, so this is the striatum part of the basal nuclei you can see that the inputs to the striatum comes from three sources which are the three sources one is the cerebral cortex the second one the thalamus and the third one substantia nigra okay so the, these are the three inputs to the striatum so from the striatum the outflow is mainly to the 
globus pallidus as well as studi substantia nigra. So the main outflow of the striatum you can call it to the globus pallidus and substantia nigra. So from the globus pallidus it goes to the subthalamus you just forget about it. But from the globus pallidus and substantia nigra you can see that this is reaching the thalamus. Okay, and from the thalamus what happens? It is again going back to the cerebral cortex. So this is actually something of a circular circuit, isn't it? Because whenever there is an information in the cerebral cortex, what will happen? This will inform the striatum. Then later from the striatum, it will give information to the globus pallidus and substantia nigra. Thereby it will influence the thalamus and the finally what to do? Uh, will be informed back to the cerebral cortex okay and then the cerebral cortex will inform the brain and spinal cord through the corticonuclear and corticospinal pathway or, 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 or we can either say uh, the cerebral cortex is actually controlling the spinal cord with the help of these uh, striatal fibers uh, passing directly through the corticonuclear or corticospinal pathway because when we usually talk about extra pyramidal we think that uh, only uh, the fibers from the striatum or the basal nuclei are actually going through the brain stem and then to the spinal cord without the uh, cerebral cortex being involved but in this case we can see that whenever there is an information received by the cerebral cortex it actually initiates a response to the striatum then the striatum will influence the globus pallidus and substantia nigra. Together they will take a decision and will send the information to the thalamus and it will again reach back to the cerebral cortex. And now the cerebral cortex says okay. So this is the decision which I got and that information will be passed through the corticospinal and corticonuclear tracts to the brainstem and spinal cord. So this is actually the neurocircuitry which you should remember in case of basal nuclei. Of course, there are many connections of the basal nuclei uh, through the extrapyramidal system, through the brainstem and to the spinal cord. But the main circuit or the neurocircuitry of the basal nuclei is like this. Uh, the rest of the connections of the basal nuclei and how it is influencing the spinal cord, we will be seeing in the coming sessions part by part. But when you, when you are asked generally about basal nuclei, these important points you should know. So basal nuclei ACC which can explain the anatomical components and also the role of function. Functionally speaking you have to know the important uh, uh, nuclei contributing to the basal nuclei. Then the lesions, the mechanisms, the increased muscle tone, involuntary movements and how you get the adduction when you use these uh, uh, the drugs like cocaine, heroin and alcohol then the neurocircuitry of the basal nuclei. So this much is about basal nuclei in a nutshell. Uh, the remaining sessions on basal nuclei uh, will be dealt in the coming sessions and there we will be seeing uh, the detailed connections or the circuitry. Uh, so please keep watching those who haven't subscribed yet. Uh, please do subscribe and those who need handwritten notes of these uh, sessions. I'm, uh, my, I myself is writing notes of the sessions from last week onwards and I will be making uh, those handwritten notes available, uh, easily available as downloadable links for those who have joined my channel. So please do join and please do subscribe and please do share these videos with your friends uh, so that uh, it will be of use to many. And thank you and thanks for watching.